After Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson shot and killed Michael Brown, this show took a moment to remember some of the other unarmed black men who have died at the hands of police. What we didn't do? We did not name any black girls or women. Girls like Ayanna Stanley Jones, the seven-year-old shot by police while sleeping on the couch when they raided her home in Detroit, Michigan in 2010. Women like Shauna Francis, who suffered with mental illness and died in 2012 after being handcuffed and held face down by the police who were responding to her sister's call for help in getting her to the hospital. It is too easy and too common to mark racial suffering only with men's stories. Trayvon, but not Renisha. Ferguson, but not Oklahoma. We must assert black women matter. And no single work of artistry has been more influential for establishing that black women matter than Ntisaka Shange's choreo poem for colored girls who've considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. First stage in Berkeley, California in 1974. This year is the 40th anniversary of For Colored Girls, which unflinchingly forces audiences to contend with the brutality, complexity, and sheer humanity of black women's lives in their own words. Because I had convinced myself that colored girls have no right to sorrow. And I lived and loved just that way and kept sorrow on the curb allegedly for you but now i know i did it for myself because i just couldn't stand it i couldn't stand being sorry and colored at the same time it's so redundant in the modern world for colored girls won an obie award in 1977 and received tony grammy and emmy nods it has been staged across the world from college campuses to broadway it inspired the title of my own second book sister citizen for colored girls who considered politics when being strong isn't enough and on September 19th, the New York Public Library Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture will begin celebrating the Choreo Poems' 40th anniversary with an exhibition called I Found God in Myself. I'm so thrilled to welcome to the table the incomparable Ndesoka Shange, author of For Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough. Well, thank you, Melissa. It, this is such an honor because I remember when the Choreo poem opened in Richmond, Virginia. Uh -huh. And my father, who is an extraordinary person in a lot of ways, nonetheless had a lot of anxiety about it because it displays in an unflinching way the violence that black women experience at the hands of black men. Mm -hmm. Over the years, how did you manage that particular critique that you were somehow telling the race's business? Oh, well, we're already in the United States census. It's not as if it was a secret. And I think what, what, what catapulted me towards wanting to express my feelings about women in situations where they were in danger was having moved from one apartment building to the next and discovering that in every building there was a batterer. In every building I lived in, there was someone who was beating his girlfriend or his wife, and I could hear her screams. And it disturbed me to the extent that one day I just started writing about that. And that's how I came to write for Willie Brown. The, the Bo Willie Brown, um, I, I went back and was reading it this week in the context of preparing to discuss the Ray Rice and Janae mm -hmm. Rice story. It is brutal. It, um, for those who have not seen or read Colored Girls, it, the end of it when the children die as a result right. of, the, of the abuse. How have you been responding to the Rice scandal? Well, I'm very disturbed with the NFL and with Ray Rice because the kind of egregious violence that he manifests on Janae Rice is assault, is, is aggravated assault, and it should be punished by jail. Mm -hmm. not by a loss of your NFL status. It's so key. If, if she were not his 
beloved, if this weren't domestic, if, if he had perpetrated that violence on another man who was a stranger, it right. would be a very different story. Exactly. When I realized that even here in this black feminist space that we like to think of Nerland uh -huh. as being, that we had talked about the death of black men without talking about that of black women. Right. I go back to the end of the poem that I found God in myself and I loved her uh -huh. fiercely. Why is it so hard for us as black women to love our God inside of ourselves? Because it's been beat out of us not to be flippant. But we've been told all the time the danger men were in. And they are in danger. And we can't deny that. But because the men are in danger doesn't mean that we have to bear our, our vulnerability as a sin. Our vulnerability comes because we're human. And the fact that some men take advantage of us when we're in intimate situations is, is fodder for the lackadaisical attitude people take toward battered women. I've spent my whole career on college campuses. Almost 40 years later, they're still performing this. Why do you think it still carries over four decades? Is it because the violence is still so prevalent that it's still such a marker of who we are? I think it's gotten worse. I know about 30 years ago, I wrote a poem about rape. And the statistics from the FBI said that it, rapes happened every two minutes and 51 seconds. I rented that out to three minutes. And now it's even worse. Rapes occur more frequently than they did 30 years ago. I find that um, I find that horrifying that for 40 years this this play this choreo poem has existed telling these stories and yet things get worse yes not better but I appreciate the strength and power of your voice and I want you to know that it has meant so much to me in my work and I appreciate you being here today oh thank you and to Saki Shange thank you for joining us this morning I also want to offer one correction in my introduction to this segment it was Sharice Francis who died in 2012 I apologize it was her sister Shauna who had been trying to help her and we mistakenly reversed those two names in our conversation that's our show for today. Thanks to you at home for watching. We're going to be back next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. 